that time again as Monarch Radio brings you back to those golden days before television when radio was the main source of family entertainment in the home. Stay tuned for another one of those drama or comedy episodes from way back when as performed by the Monarch old-time radio players. Monarch Radio is pleased to present its recreation of an episode of the Situation Comedy Magnificent Montague Radio series entitled Lily Gets a Dog. It was first aired on January 19, 1951 from the Radio City Studios in New York and starred Monty Woolley as Montague with Anne Seymour as Lily and Pert Kelton as Agnes. Included in the original cast for today's episode were Art Carney and Don Pardo as the announcers. Woolley played a fading Shakespearean actor accepting the role on a radio soap opera to keep working. The radio series was created by Nat Hyken, who also was a director and co-writer with Billy Freeberg for the series. With that said, refresh your cup of coffee and settle in and listen to this episode featuring the Monarch Old Time Radio Players. And now the magnificent Montague. Edward Montague is a stubborn man. As the magnificent Montague of the Shakespearean theater, he held out for years against going on the radio. Now that hunger has driven him to becoming Uncle Goodhart, hero of an afternoon radio program, he refuses to get off the air, even for a weekend vacation. His poor wife, Lily, is doomed for another weekend in the city. But Agnes, their maid, is happily packing for an outing. You are my sunshine, my only sunshine. You make me happy. You make me sad. Toot, boot, toot, toot. Agnes? What is it, honey? You're, oh, you're packing. Are you going away for the weekend? What do you think? I'm off for the wide open spaces, and I don't mean your husband's mouth. <laughs> what is it this time? Another outing of my club, the unattached girls of East 37th Street. You girls have so much fun. I just can't get Edwin out of New York. What a break for the rest of the country. <laughs> oh, he just hates the country. Oh, he's just afraid of the birds. If they spot that beautiful nest that hangs down from his chin, they'll think it's a federal housing project for swallows. <laughs> oh, that's silly. Tell me about the trip. I didn't know you were going by car. A car, she said. We all chipped in. We sent Zelda Zimmerman down to a used car lot. And boy, did she come back with a heap. A real meatball on wheels. What kind is it? A 1923 Essex, the one they used to call a Greyhound. I remember. Does it run? Run. If you put a rabbit in front of it, it'll chase it. <laughs> well, then why was Zelda talked into buying it? The salesman gave her a real pitch. He said it was just like a modern car. No gear shift. No gear shift? It fell off 20 years ago. Agnes, I'm worried about you going on a trip in a car like that. Honey, it's the perfect car for a cheap trip. It don't use gas. No gas? No, you just feed the squirrels under the hood. <laughs> Agnes, in a car like that, it sounds too dangerous. Oh, don't worry, honey. Hazel Schmischoff's boyfriend is a mechanic. He got under the car and said all he had to do was turn a few screws. And that's all he did. Good. Yeah, he's been under the car for five days now. Oh, <laughs> five days? Uh, the motor fell on him. Oh, yeah. oh, Agnes. Well, I hope it doesn't rain and spoil your outing. Just being out of this house and away from that monster husband of yours is going to make it a glorious holiday. <laughs> when Edwin and I were younger, he used to love going on boat rides up the Hudson. I know. Then Fulton invented the steamboat and scared Montague off the river. Oh, Agnes. No kidding. You need a rest, honey. Make him take you somewhere. Oh, what's the use? He's so stubborn. Look, honey. Use your brain. Tell him your health's shattered. Tell him he's gonna take you away before the boys in the white coats do it for him. You think I could do it? Why not? You're an actress. How do you think most wives get a vacation? A groan, a moan in front of a husband, and it's hi-ho off to Bermuda. 
Do you think a few moans and groans would work? It does with most husbands. Of course, with Montague, you may have to chop off an arm or something. Agnes, I hate deceiving Edwin, but I just know getting him out of town would be good for him too. Oh, that must be Edwin, back from his morning walk around the block. I'll let him in. Here he is, nature boy. <laughs> <laughs> well, as I live and breathe, glamorous Agnes, the last of the bloomer girls. <laughs> Where's Lily? She's lying down on the couch. Lily, lying down? I'm over here, Edwin. Oh, what's the matter? Oh, I don't know, Edwin. I've been feeling funny all week. She's fainted three times this morning. Please, Agnes, I didn't want him to know. Know what? Cad, you look wonderful. This woman needs a rest. A rest? Nonsense. She hasn't worked since 1937 when we did Romeo and Juliet. And even then, she was lying in a nice soft coffin for the whole last act. Edwin, it's just that I'm cooped up in this apartment all year. Look at her. The poor thing needs some sunshine. Well, so do I. And if you'd clean the windows once in a while, we'd get it. <laughs> oh, Edwin, my head is splitting. I'll tell you, she needs a change. You are so right. We'll get a new maid. <laughs> I don't like to demand that perhaps a weekend in the country with fresh air, sunshine, and green fields. Sunshine and fresh air? That could kill you, you know. Edwin, everybody goes away for the weekend. You're up now. I thought you were so sick, my weak little wife. Oh, Edwin, you're horrible. <laughs> well, stop bawling. Tragedy never was one of your strong points. Go to your radio broadcast. Go anywhere. I could make it more specific. <laughs> Agnes, you started it all, this insane weekend nonsense. Oh, will you go to your radio broadcast? Yeah, hit the road. I'm going. Home sweet home. Be it ever so humble, there's no place like Bellevue. Goodbye. <laughs> oh, now, honey. Oh, Agnes, it's not that I particularly want to go away on a weekend. But when I pretended I was sick, he didn't even seem to care. Well, there's one consolation. You married Montague for better or worse. And he can't get any worse. Oh, that's Edwin. As usual, when he's been nasty, he's coming back to apologize. The fiend, I'll get the door. Oh, so you've come crawling back. Oh, it's Mr. Zingzer, the director of Montague's Uncle Goodheart program. Oh, hello, Mr. Zingzer. Oh. Hello there, Mrs. Montague. Is Mr. Montague home? <laughs> well, no, he left the radio station. You just missed him. Oh, fiddle dee dee. What's the matter, Mr. Zinser? What have you got in that basket? Well, I'd rather not discuss it, Mrs. Montague. Whatever it is, it's moving. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Zinser, what is it? Please, Mrs. Montague, it's not the sort of thing Men talk about in front of women. <laughs> Come now. Look, we're all over 21. Tell us, Mr. Zenzer. Well, all right. You see, a few days ago, oh, oh, I shouldn't be so risque. Oh, oh, go on. What is it? Well, here goes. Uh, our dog had puppies. <gasps> oh, what he said. <laughs> <laughs> Quiet, Agnes. So what's the basket? A puppy? Oh, quick, let me see him. It's a her. Here, I'll pull back the blanket. Oh, Agnes, look. <laughs> oh, oh, isn't she the cutest thing? Congratulations, Mr. Zinner. She has your nose. <laughs> Thank you. You really think so? Oh, look, look, she's trying to bite my finger. I'm sorry Mr. Montague isn't here to see her. I brought the puppy just for him. For Montague? Oh, no, Mr. Zinder. Edwin complains if a dog even walks in front of the building. Next to people and children, he hates dogs the most. Gee, 
I thought Uncle Goodhart would like a dog in his home. I'm sorry, Mr. Zinser. It's very sweet of you, but you better get it out of here. If Edwin even suspected a dog was in our apartment. Oh dear, what am I going to do with little Edwina? I have to get to the radio station. Oh, I'll just leave her at the city dog pound. There's nothing I can... Edwina, sure goes for you, honey. Oh, look at her, cute as a button. She's licking my hand, it tickles. Well, come on, Edwina, just pound. Oh, Mr. Zenzer, you can't take her to the pound. Well, I have to do something. I can't take her back home. I've got to eat more to get rid of. Mm, let's go. Oh, well, Mr. Zenzer, wait. I'll miss the broadcast. Mr. Zenzer, leave the dog here. Honey, have you lost your marbles? Agnes, I don't even care what Evan says. Little Edwina is not going to the pound. <laughs> you mean you keep the dog? Yes. All my life I've wanted a dog, and little Edwina is just the one. Oh, that's great. There's a vet around the corner, Doc Dr. Spitz. I'll send her right out. A vet? All puppies need their shots and things like that. Gee, I'll be late for the broadcast. Goodbye. Honey, a dog in the same house with Montague? It'll be murder. I don't care. Edmund will have to get used to her. Oh, brother, between his beard and the dog, we'll have every flea in New York in here. <laughs> oh, here, let me hold her. Oh, little Edwina. Little Edwina's not going to any nasty old town. Oh, look at the little sweetheart. That must be the vet, Dr. Spitz. I'm coming, I'm coming. Will someone open this door? It's Edwin. Edwin? I can't explain it to him now. Let me in. I'll hide the dog in the bedroom. Tell him anything, Agnes. Don't let him find out. Lucky Agnes, always in the middle. Coming. What's the idea of keeping me waiting? Where's Lily? Shh. She's in the bedroom. Well, then she's really sick. Lily? Don't go in there. Let her rest. Oh, you're right. I guess I must have been out of my mind. I was halfway to the radio station before I realized how miserably I've treated Lily. I want her to know. Sure, sure. I'll tell her. Now go. I don't hear anything in the bedroom. She must be resting. Yeah, yeah. Now go. Agnes, I'm worried. She looked pale. Is she really sick? It's nothing. Nothing at all. <laughs> Agnes, listen to her. Lily! Don't go in there or you'll upset her. But she sounded awful. It'll pass. Just a little sinus condition. Sinus? <laughs> Gad, that's the worst case of sinus I ever heard. Call a doctor. Now, don't worry. There's a Dr. Spitz coming over. Now, beat it. You'll be late for your broadcast. How can I leave at a time like this? Why, she's in horrible pain. I should be at her side. No, you've done enough. Oh, Agnes, she complained about feeling ill and I ignored it. I feel like a dog. <laughs> Oh, what a monster I've been. Agnes, I'm going to nurse her back to health. I'll take her to the country for a month. Six weeks. Get out! Call me if she gets worse. Agnes, I couldn't keep Edwina quiet. I think something's wrong. Now don't you start. Well, it worked, honey. He's taken you out of the city. One more howl out of Edwina, and you would have had world cruise. Don't talk nonsense. I can't leave the city now. I have a dog to take care of. It's like a baby. I wouldn't think of going anywhere. I give up. 
Oh, quick, quick, that's the vet. I'll let him in. Are you the vet? Yeah, I'm Dr. Spitz. Mr. Zinzer sent me. Where's that hound? The dog. Oh, oh, right here, doctor. I think something's wrong with Edwina. Yeah, we fix the little puppies up good like new. Ha ha ha, hee hee, let's go. Go? Where? To my dog hospital, around the corner. A hospital? Oh, doctor, what's wrong with her? Well, I think the dog, she has the pip. The pip? The pip! Oh! <laughs> quick, quick, let's go. While Agnes and Lily are at Dr. Spitz's dog hospital, seeing Edwina through her first crisis, it is a remorseful Edwin Montague who is just finishing his Uncle Goodhart program. And so, Ronald, once again, you've come to Uncle Goodhart for advice. Now you want to change your name. Don't you like the name of Ronald Smith? It's a good American name, Ronald. There's nothing to be ashamed of. But no, for some strange reason, you want to change your name to John D. Rockefeller Jr. <laughs> Just because that's the name you've been signing checks with. <laughs> but you have nothing to worry about. As Shakespeare said, what's in a name? You just keep signing those checks, and the authorities will change your name for you to a nice, long number. <laughs> so, dear listeners, like Ronald, as the prison gates close on him for 99 years, remember, keep your head high, into the sun, and... So, ends another episode of Uncle Goodhart. Until tomorrow, when he meets you again in his little cottage on the sunny side of the lane, here's Uncle Goodhart with his thought for the day. When your neighbor gets pushed off a fishing boat, wearing his heaviest clothes for the day, as he goes to the bottom like a lump of lead, yell down to him, Anchors away! Okay, Miss Montague, you're off the air. Springer, did you receive a call from my home? No, no one called. Oh, thank heavens. Lily must be better. Well, she listened to your program just now. She must be proud of you. Now, please. It's inspirational, Mr. Montague. It's like drinking in a tonic. Hmm, hair tonic. It was sickening. <laughs> now, don't be modest. Here's Mr. Zinger. Good show, eh, Zinger? It was a four-star doozer, all right? All right. <laughs> Please. I've got to get home to see my wife. Going home, Mr. Montague? Immediately. <laughs> Zinger, what is it? I know something you don't know. <laughs> Stop this. What is it? You've got a glorious surprise waiting for you at home. A surprise? How do you know? I saw your wife after you left. You did? Quick, Zinzer, how was she? Wonderful. I've never seen her so happy. Zinzer, that is a glorious surprise. What is it, Mr. Montague? Something wrong with the ball and chain? <laughs> yes. I I've just got to get her away for a little vacation. She sounded awful this morning. Wives are all the same. Complaining all the time. Pick my missus. Up at five, doing the laundry, cooking the breakfast, getting the brats off to school, mowing the lawn, cleaning the house, cooking the dinner, washing the dishes. Well, you think all that exercise would do her good? No. Comes midnight, she can't keep her eyes open. <laughs> Falls asleep in the middle of washing the car. And they say the automobile replaced the horse. Look, boys, I've got to get Lily out of the house. What do you fellows do on a weekend? Oh, my wife and I like to get on a baseball diamond in Central Park and kick up our heels. Hmm. Well, please, Zinner, that's not exactly what I had in mind for Lily and me. Well, well, it's oodles of fun. I knock out fungos and she shags flies. All right, Zinzer. Oh, my wife's a magnificent ball player. Is that right? She's constantly being mistaken for Yogi Berra. All right, Zinzer. Uh, of course, that's with her catcher's mask on. 
Uh, yes, I understand. Without the mask, she looks like Joe DiMaggio. <laughs> Zinzer, will you stop? And no reflection on Joe DiMaggio. Oh, no. Springer, what do you do when your wife doesn't feel well? Not a thing. I don't like to pamper her. But if she's sick? She just crawls off into the woods until she feels better. Well, I can see I'm going to get no help from you two. I'd better get home to Lily. I've got a lot of making up to do. Don't pamper her. Why, I'm going to be the most considerate husband in the world. From now on, we're going places and doing things together. Why, why don't you bring her out to the baseball diamond? Big game tomorrow. Husbands against the wives. Ah, uh, no thanks. And funniest thing, they make my wife play on the men's side. <laughs> no quiet. Where's my hat? I'm going home to my lily. Lily? Lily? Agnes? That's funny. No one's home. At least that means she's well again. She's doing that shopping she said she had to do. Gad, what a scare she gave me. Those sounds she made. I'll hear them in my sleep. Coming. Oh, the janitor. Any garbage? Uh, look, can you come back later? My wife isn't home. Not uh, yet, huh? Well, I seen her and I just rush out with the doctor. With the doctor? Yeah, I said they were going to the hospital. Hospital? What hospital? Tell me. I don't know. Let go of me. The hospital. I hope I'm not too late. Where's the phone? Operator, give me the hospital. Well, how do I know? Any hospital. Call them all. Oh, now what? What is it? You're here, Montague? Yes, but I'm busy. I'm Dr. Spitz. Dr. Spitz? Oh, you're the one. Yeah. How is she? How is she? Well, she was a pretty sick girl, but she's all right now. Thank heaven. Thank heaven. Yeah, she's resting in the hospital. She should be home in a day or two. Tell me, doctor. Be frank with me. What was wrong with her? Uh, the usual summer ailments. She was full of worms. <laughs> worms? Yeah, I give her a couple of shots, and it's Auf Wiedersehen to the worms. What else did you have to do? Well, I clipped and plucked her. Oh, no. I shaved off all of the hair, cool for the summer. Well, of course, she always wanted a short haircut. And by Jiminy, she got it. Doctor, this is serious. She looked terrible. Uh, she's a beauty now. Looks good, eh? Wait till you see her with her ears clipped. <laughs> you clipped her ears? Well, she must be crazy to let you do that. Crazy? Not her. She's a smart one. I know. Already you can start teaching her tricks. Tricks? You'll see. In a few weeks you can send her alone and she'll come back with a newspaper in her mouth. Oh, no. What's happened to her? Her mind is gone. Don't you worry. I'll bring her around all right. She'll be all right. I'll get the best nurses to take care of her. Here. But nurses, all she needs is companionship and love. Yeah, I'll go bring her home. Poor Lily. Companionship and love. Why does a man find out these things when it's too late? From now on, my life has but one goal, bringing Lily back to normal. Now take it easy, honey. Agnes, what's you? Boy, you've got a bag. Here, lie down. What's you? When I walked through that dog hospital, I choked. I don't know what hit me. Good thing you found out you're allergic to dogs. What's you? Oh, Agnes, don't even mention the word dogs. I'm glad we got in touch with Dr. Zimzer in time. He's going to take, don't, don't say it, the D-O-G back. <laughs> Just let me lie here and recuperate. 
I never in my life want to see another. I'll get the door. Oh, it's you. Agnes, is she home? Oh, there you are, Lily. Now, Lily, don't don't get up. Edwin, I, uh, too. Poor, poor little Lily. Can you ever forgive me? Edwin, uh, too. Things are going to be different now, Lily. I spoke to the doctor. You did? You need love and companionship. You have all my love, Lily. Oh, Edwin. And look what I've brought you to keep you company when I'm not by your side. I bought you this. What? Well, looky, in its basket. Oh, no. Lily. You big jerk. Get the dog out of here. But I bought it. Get it out. I can't stand it. Oh, well, what are you going to do? Springer's right about women. Don't pamper them. Featured in today's cast for yours truly, Judy Richards as the announcer, Judy Stevens as Lily, Jan Schmidt as Agnes, Charles Davis as Zinzer, Charlie Pellissier as Montague, Maureen Wishner as the puppy, Judy Katz as Spitz and radio announcer, and Bob Jepson as Springer and the janitor. Due to the current shelter in place, our recreation of this magnificent Montague episode was conducted remotely where cast members were located at their respective homes. This show was recorded and edited by Judy Katz and was directed by Howard Wishner. Howard Wishner also provided sound effects using sound recordings from freefx.co.uk, as well as portions from the original broadcast. Maureen Wishner provided casting and script selection.